Good day, everyone. Scripture tells us the days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80 if we are strong. They are soon gone and we fly away. Teach us, Lord, to number our days that we may gain a wise heart. Satisfy us with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad in all of our days. We come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come into your presence this day to acknowledge you as our God and our King, as the one who is our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, the God that has formed us out of the dust, and the God that tells us we must return to the dust. Lord, we come before you recognizing our shortcomings, that we do not always remember our mortality and we live in ways that show an attitude of carelessness. We do not think about the impact of our words and our thoughts and our actions and the hurt we have caused others. We do not think about the grief and the suffering of those around us, those who have lost loved ones. And so we ask now, God, that you forgive us that you pour out the blood of the Lamb upon us and cleanse us so that we will once again walk in this world in a way that is pure and holy and acceptable to you. So we offer up this prayer and this time of worship in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Israel had a king, there was a famine in the land. So a man named Elimelech, who belonged to the clan of Ephrathah, and who lived in Bethlehem in Judah, went with his wife Naomi and their two sons, Malan and Kilion, to live for a while in the country of Moab. While they were living there, Elimelech died and Naomi was left alone with her two sons. 
who married a Moabite woman, Orpah and Ruth. About ten years later, Marlon and Kilian also died, and Naomi was left all alone without husband or sons. Some time later, Naomi heard that the Lord had blessed his people by giving them good crops. So she got ready to leave Moab with her daughters-in-law. They started out together to go back to Judah, but on the way she said to them, Go back home and stay with your mothers. May the Lord be as good to you as you have been to me and to those who have died. And may the Lord make it possible for each of you to marry again and have a home. So Naomi kissed them goodbye, but they started crying and said to her, No, we will go with you to your people. You must go back, my daughters, Naomi answered. Why do you want to come with me? Do you think I can have sons again for you to marry? Go back home, for I am too old to get married again. If I thought there was still hope and so got married tonight and had sons, would you wait until they had grown up? Would this keep you from marrying someone else? No, my daughters, you know that's impossible. The Lord has turned against me, and I feel very sorry for you. Again they started crying, then Opa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and went back home. But Ruth held on to her. So Naomi said to her, Ruth, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God. Go back home with her. But Ruth answered, Don't ask me to leave you. Let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And that is where I will be buried. May the Lord's worst punishment come upon me if I let anything but death separate me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. As we prepare for the proclamation of God's word, I invite you to bow with me in prayer once more. Let us pray. God of light and life, we ask now that you silence in us any voice with your own. I may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our living Lord, our Redeemer, our friend. Amen. Today, November 3rd, is a day that is very close to all saints. It is a time in our lives, in our churches, that we remember those who have gone, those who have lost their lives, those who we wish to memorialize and celebrate their lives. It is also a time for us to remember just how fragile life is, how easily it can change. And to remember the world that we live in now is one that does not always value life. And so there is sickness, there is murder, there is violence, whether we are young or old, it doesn't matter. Death can come at any point. And as God's people, we are called to be ready. There are other struggles we face in this world. And as we look to the story of Ruth, it is one that tells us, at least at the beginning of a journey of grief, how did Naomi react to the death of those around her, and how do we as Christians respond when we see that same pain and suffering around us? In Ruth chapter 1, we find a story starting with a man, a very ordinary man named Elimelech. We don't hear much about him because the story is really centered on the women. And so we hear about his wife, Naomi, and they are from Bethlehem. But the experience of famine they experience a sense of food insecurity. And because of that, they move, they migrate to Moab. In Moab, they settle, they have two children, these children get married, and within 10 years, things change again very drastically. As Elimelech dies, Marlon dies, Killian dies. And so now we have three women who are widows, Three women, Naomi, Ruth, and Orpah, who are 
faced with a sense of insecurity with their economic status. There is no breadwinner, there is no one to protect them, there is no one to assure them of a place in society. Because as widows, many of them are ostracized and if they had no close kin, things would be very difficult in their lives. And so Naomi cries out to God. Naomi is devastated. And she is as devastated even as the land is. This land that they came to when it was flourishing and now it is barren and there is another famine that they must flee. Naomi feels that same emptiness in her as she goes through that loss of her husband and children. And so in her pain, she decides that she is, you know, she's a lost cause. She has no way out of this devastation. And in that pain, she even rejects God. Or she feels more like God has rejected her. Now Naomi encourages her daughters-in-law to go back to their homes, go back to their land, go back and remarry. They're still young. And he, she also tells them something very strange that we read about in the passage, you know. You know, if I could have had sons again, would you wait for them to grow to marry? And for us here now, it sounds very strange. But for them, it would have been a practice of Leverite marriage. That if the husband died, then the wife would have to marry his brother or another kin of the family. That would allow her the financial security and the social status to continue her life. But Naomi is telling them that's not even an option, so don't even think about it. So she tries to send them away, and when people are in pain like that, we try to reject people before they reject us. And so she feels that sense of rejection from God, and she says, you know, God, God hasn't dealt well with me. I don't know what to do next. She wonders if her daughters-in-law might reject her too, and so she sends them off first. And at first, they say, no, we'll stay with you. But the second time, Opa leaves, but Ruth remains. Ruth clings to Naomi, and Ruth offers a very precious gift to her in this time of suffering. Ruth offers her care. Ruth dedicates herself to Naomi's well-being. Because of the famine that is now in Moab, Naomi returns to Bethlehem with Ruth in tow. They go to people who would have been related to Naomi, and when they see her, they wonder, is this really Naomi? Because the grief had taken a physical toll on her. They're not sure if that's really her face. And that grief is not only something they see on her physically, but it has affected her mentally and emotionally. She tells them, call me Mara, because I am bitter. But when she goes to that place, there is also a chance, there is also an opportunity. At the end of these verses, something new is coming. Ruth and Naomi arrive together in Bethlehem. And it is at the beginning of harvest time. And that is a time in which especially widows would have much more access to food. As it was commanded in Deuteronomy 14.19, when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheep in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be left for the migrating foreigner, the orphan, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all your undertakings. And so we see the beginning of a shift. The beginning of a shift out of that extremely painful grief and sorrow. And now with the care, that Ruth has offered, now with the movement they have made, now with this fresh chance for
for security amongst family. They will work together for a future that results in the line of David, that results in the line of Jesus. So friends, what is our task today? As we think about many of the lessons and realities of this passage and in our world today, I would ask of you that you try to recognize the grief around you. Sometimes there are physical signs and sometimes there is nothing. And so it calls upon us to always be careful with our words. It calls upon us to have a sense of kindness and gentleness when we deal with people because we do not know the sorrow they are carrying. We do not know the suffering that they are carrying. Our task as well is one that is just like Ruth, to give care. Caregivers are one of those roles that women often take up in society and there is no thankfulness for it, there is no gratitude. Many women are just expected to take care of those around them without being given a choice. But caregiving is precious, it's important, it's valuable. We too must value the work that is done by ourselves and by others. So give care as you can. We think of the words of Jesus in the Beatitude who says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And we are called not just to give care, but to provide comfort in knowing what God has done for us and asking and giving that comfort to others. I ask you also to remember that life is not as simple as we think it might be. That the reasons that people may have migrated, the, pe the reasons why people might be starving and looking for food are not what we might call laziness, might, we might call escaping, but, but we might call just looking for greener grass on the other side. No. Life is more complicated than that. And we see that in Naomi's journey. Not just her searching for food security to be able to feed herself and her family, but also the toll that death would have taken upon her as she lost her livelihood, she lost her protection, she lost hope. And so as we think about that complication, let us make that commitment to live true to what Deuteronomy tells us that Ruth and Naomi are able to then benefit from. When we see about our lives and when we look at the different things we can reap around us, and if we forget something, leave it. Who knows who it may bless? Or perhaps we take that intentional route that in doing the work of caring for the poet spirit, that we will set aside a portion that especially goes to those in need. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I invite all those who profess Him as Lord and Savior and are seeking to follow in His ways and to live in unity one with the other to come to His table with reverence, faith, and thanksgiving. Eat and drink for your strengthening, that you may grow in grace and be blessed with all spiritual blessings, remembering that we, all many, we are one body in Christ. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And I invite us to say just where we are, John 3, 16, together. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. In the Lord's Supper, Christ is present by the power of the Holy Spirit and offers us his body broken for our sake and his blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. As we prepare to receive this great gift,
gift. Let us confess our sin and hear the promise of forgiveness. Let us pray. Merciful God, we come before your throne of grace to confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. So in your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we will take delight in doing your will, walking in your ways, and giving glory to your holy name, now and always. Amen. Hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, and a new life has begun. So know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. Let us join our hearts in a prayer of great thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel, and for Jesus Christ, your Son, in whom your full nature dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our human life, Eating and drinking with sinners and saints alike, he welcomes us to his table. Guiding his children as a rabbi, he leads us. Visiting the sick with compassion, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives us new life. Living with you now, he intercedes for each and every one of us. So it is with thanksgiving now we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that this meal may be a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast far and wide. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love, that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. And now, with the confidence as children of God, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread, and after giving thanks as we have done, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. And after giving thanks as we have done, he blessed it. And he shared it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the seal of the new covenant. As often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. The body of the Lord broken for us, the blood of our Lord, the cup of our salvation.
the blood of all God, the seal of the new covenant, that is drink together with faith and thankfulness. We bow together in prayer. Let us pray. God of the universe, in your splendor and in your might, you did not hesitate to become human, vulnerable, frail, to offer us your body broken for our sake and your blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray now that the bread that we have eaten and the wine that we have drunk will now strengthen our spirits, that it will nourish us and give us the strength to live in this world in a way that is pleasing to you. We ask, Holy God, that you teach us to open our eyes, that we will truly see the needs of those around us and not simply dismiss them, but instead seek to be like you, seek to be ones who give care to one another, seek to be those who understand that you are a God who hears us and responds. So we offer up this prayer, knowing that you will gift us every good gift through your Holy Spirit to do your will. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
to comfort one another and bear each other's burdens, especially during times of grief and times of human need. Open our hearts to truly care for one another as you care for us. May your spirit grant us gifts of empathy and grace as we continue our journey in this world and the next. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant us all his peace, both now and forevermore. 